My name is Dr. Kenyon Williams. I'm professor of percussion here at Minnesota State University, Moorhead. I'm so excited today to welcome you into the MSUM Percussion Studio, where today we're going to be looking at the Minnesota 2020 through 21 All-State Audition excerpts. Now, we're going to begin with the snare drum excerpt today. And the snare drum excerpt uh, has a few simple tricks and tips you can follow to help you get the best possible recording you can do for your own audition. Now, the first and most important thing, and I'm sure you've been told this a thousand times, is practice with a metronome. Make sure you know exactly what you're going to be doing as you begin practicing. So get that metronome, and notice it says tempo mark 108. Now, that's great for quarter note, but this piece has lots of 3-8, 4-8, 7-8 in it. So, of course, don't set your metronome at 108. Set it at the eighth note. So the eighth note, 2 times 108, 216. That's about this fast. Okay, so now I have my metronome, I have a sense of what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to look at the piece and I'm going to think, how kind of roll should I use? Well, there are two types of rolls in all of snare drumming. There's what's called the orchestral style and the rudimental style for the two different styles of drumming that we play in the United States. Now this piece is definitely in the orchestral style, which means the rolls we want to use are buzz rolls. So we're going to perform this not with double strokes, but rather the buzzes. One of the key things you can do when you perform a piece like this is enter confidently. Notice the piece helps us out with this. We begin with fortissimo. So I want to begin with a nice full attack about 12 inches off the drums, the general rule of thumb I give my students for a nice fortissimo attack. And I want to play it nice and solid. So I'm going to begin by getting my metronome. And I'm going to play just the first few measures for you. Here I go. Now, you'll notice a couple things I did right there to make it a little as even as possible and a little bit more solid. First off, I play what's called right hand lead sticking. So my right hand's playing all the eighth notes, the one ands or the one, two, threes when we go to three eighths. My left hand plays the e's and the uhs in four, four. When I go to three eighths, I may think of them as tuhs or as uhs. So I'm playing right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, 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 left, right, left, right, right. And when I keep going, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right. I do this instead of alternate sticking. Alternate sticking would be right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right. The reason I prefer dominant hand sticking is I believe it gives a stronger sense of propulsion and drive, and I can control the evenness more. The danger is I have to be careful not to let my left hand become subdominant to my right hand. So I want to make sure I'm playing like this, for example, in the first measure, and not this. For my left hand, because it's not playing as much, suddenly becomes softer. We have to make sure and carefully balance and match out. Now. One, by the way, one thing you can do to help you with this skill is record yourself like I'm doing right now. Record yourself practicing this piece and watch closely. Am I playing with one hand consistently above the other or are they equally matched? Now, another thing I want to do to make this piece really sing is I want to add phrasing. Notice if I play this piece just as written, the first three bars, it's kind of flat. That's what you heard a moment ago. Now I'm going to add in a sense of dynamic contour. I, in my mind, I hear the first three bars as a definite phrase. And the composer, uh, in this case, Garwood Whaley, has definitely set a sense of that with the dynamics. The first three bars are marked fortissimo, the next three bars are marked forte. So we're going to play those first three bars with a sense of crescendo to the middle, decrescendo to the end. So we're going to build to the middle, decrescendo to the end. And listen to the difference. Here I go with phrasing. So I kind of built up and then came down a little bit. Now, I could also phrase it differently where I crescendo to the end of the bar. So I have this definite drop off when I get to my fourth measure. Listen to how I might do that. That adds another sense of color and contour. Now, your judges, when they get to the high levels, are going to be listening for students who can not only play the right notes and the right rhythms, that's a given. They're looking for people who can also perform the music musically, who can add elements that aren't on the page, that make it interesting, that make it come alive. Now, an easy way to do that is simply to go through and mark the piece with phrase markings. Now, you can see in my excerpt here, I've gone through and I've marked in my own phrase markings throughout the piece. And this is where I hear it. Now, the glory of being a musician is everybody can have their own interpretation of what the phrases are. Some phrases are more cut and dry than the others. For example, the first three bars obviously are their own phrase because of the way the composer wrote dynamics. Later on in the piece, the composer may write in crescendos and decrescendos. And of course, we have to follow those when the composer writes them in. 
unless I have a very good reason not to. But for, since it's an all-state audition, we're definitely going to follow those. So I want to be careful that I follow the original composer's intent. But beyond that, I have room to shape the, the phrases. For example, when I start in the fourth bar, with the forte, listen to what happens if I play it just flat. Here, I'll play it flat for you. Ready? I'm going to get my metronome again. Make sure I have my pulse. And I would normally practice with the metronome running, but because I want you to hear me shape the contour, I'm going to turn it off for right now. Here I go. I'm going to start right there in measure four. Kind of boring, kind of stale. Now, I'm going to add again that shape. I'm going to crescendo to the middle, decrescendo to the back half. So listen to what I do here. Ah, that provides a sense of... Breath in, breath out, and add some musical color and context to the composition. Now notice if I start at the next few bars, the 7-8, I'm going to do the same thing. In my mind, the next five bars are one phrase. So I'm going to build to the middle and build out to the end, and fade out to the end. Here I go. So you can see, build in, build out. Now, notice in the next phrase here, I have piano. So this is a short little two bar portion. Again, tight roll. And then I have mezzo forte. Again, a little four bar phrase. I'm going to build it again towards the middle. Jump up dynamically. And then piano. Now this one right here, I'm just going to keep this one nice and soft all the way to the end because it kind of naturally crescendos the way the composer wrote it. Then mm, back into the restatement of my original theme of the piece. The, the 4 4 here, I make right back to the beginning, only, only the forte dynamic instead of a fortissimo dynamic. So I'm going to play the whole piece for you now and point out just a couple of important things one more time. Number one, buzz rolls. Number two, I really recommend keeping the right hand on all the ones and the ands, or the set five eight sections, for example, one, two, three, four, five, the left hands on the e's and us. Also, insert those phrases. That's going to make it musical. It's going to be that much more interesting to listen to and more fun to perform. Finally, be sure and observe all the dynamics. Be very, very careful about that. And of course, the last and most obvious is what I began our master class with. Use your metronome. Get to know it, practice with it, and make sure that you're practicing consistent, strong eighth note pulse. In this case, the eighth note set to quarter eighth note equals 216. So, I'm going to begin now, and I'll run it straight through. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs>